Radioactive decay is a process where unstable atomic nuclei lose energy and emit radiation. It's silent, invisible, and can be incredibly dangerous. Whether caused by accident or caused intentionally, there are several places on Earth that are highly radioactive. From Chernobyl to the east coast of Somalia, here are the top 15 most dangerous radioactive areas on Earth. Number 15. Aberdeenshire Scotland may not be known for nuclear testing facilities or uranium mines, but there's one area in particular that travelers should be wary of. In 2012, more than 2,000 radiation testing kits were sent out to the residents of Aberdeenshire when 800 homes had detected higher than normal levels of radon. Radon is a naturally radioactive gas from trace amounts of uranium found in everyday rocks and soil. But it's not something that you want too much of. Not at all, and high levels account for more than 1,000 deaths in Britain a year. The radon produces radioactive dust in the air that eventually gets into people's lungs, and when not dealt with immediately, can lead to some serious long-term health risks. Number 14. Ramsar Sitting along the coast of the Caspian Sea in Iran is the city of Ramsar. Ramsar isn't a nuclear testing ground or home to a uranium mill, and yet the area is still highly radioactive. But this is another case of natural radium levels jumping a little too high for human consumption. In Ramsar, there is a higher level of radium in the mineral water, which is exacerbated by the natural hot springs of the area. But the hot springs are used in spas by locals and tourists alike, which are all affected by the radium-226. And while the residents and visitors of Ramsar won't likely be developing cancers anytime soon, they are still exposed to what is known as background radiation. But with that said, residents will still require remedial actions to counteract the exposure. So while Ramsar isn't the site of serious fallout, it's still one of the most radioactive areas in the world. Number 13. The Polygon This entry on the list typically flies beneath the radar, since it occurred before many of our lifetimes and hasn't been in the news or on television in a few decades. But the Polygon is an area of Kazakhstan that saw a ridiculous amount of nuclear testing by the Soviet Union during the Cold War in the event of an all-out war with the United States that never came. It's been estimated that between the years of 1949 and 1989, there were a grand total of 450 nuclear tests at the Polygon, but it's the residents of the nearby towns who felt the full brunt of the bombings. The full impact of the radiation exposure of the residents was actually kept a closely guarded secret by the Soviet Union. But once the test site was closed in 1991, the unfortunate information was brought to light. Since then, the Polygon has become one of the most studied atomic testing sites in the world. Number 12. The Hanford Site Making our ways overseas to the United States is the Hanford Site in Washington State. Another testing site for the Cold War, but this time, obviously, by the U.S. It was the main plutonium production facility for their secret weapon arsenal that, thankfully, they never needed to use. Both the Soviets and the United States were in a race to see who could make the biggest and the baddest weaponry. So, for the next 40-some-odd years, they stockpiled as many weapons as they could. And this, as we're seeing today, had some serious side effects that no one really thought of until it was too late. So, at the Hanford site in Washington, the United States stockpiled enough plutonium for about 60,000 nuclear weapons, including the batch of plutonium that was used to make Fat Man, which was the atomic bomb dropped on Nagasaki in 1945. The site has since been decommissioned, but still holding on to about 60% of the high-level radioactive waste by volume that is managed by the U.S. Department of Energy. Radioactive waste isn't the type of thing you can just throw into the garbage and walk away from. So much of the Hanford site waste is buried deep underground, but much of the area's groundwater is still very contaminated. Number 11. The Siberian Chemical Combine In the city of Seversk, Russia, you'll find the Siberian Chemical Combine, which was one of the production facilities used for, you guessed it, the production of weapons-grade nuclear products as part of the Soviet nuclear weapons program. Like we've mentioned earlier in the video, there was a not-so-brief moment in time where everyone in the world was, unfortunately, just about ready for nuclear annihilation. So when the Soviet Union disbanded in 1991, the Siberian Chemical Combine ceased all production of plutonium and their highly enriched uranium. But that doesn't mean that the site was closed completely. Today, it's still a major site for the storage and handling of nuclear materials made for weapons. So instead of making things here, they're just keeping them there, which is still a scary thought. 
but the facility is also used as a supplier of low-enriched uranium to meet the fuel needs of both Russia and their foreign customers. The combine is also one of the world's largest sites for the storage of low- and intermediate-level nuclear waste, more than 1,500 feet deep into the ground. This is definitely not the type of place you want to visit. Number 10. Zapadny Mining and Chemical Combine Unlike what we've seen so far, the Zapadny Mining and Chemical Combine in Malisu, Kyrgyzstan, was not a nuclear testing facility, production facility, or even a power station. The area is rich in uranium on its own, which makes it a pretty desirable place to mine if you're looking for the stuff. And that's exactly what the Soviet Union was doing during the Cold War. The Zapadny Mining and Chemical Combine was a big-time mining operation where large amounts of uranium ore were excavated to be brought to the weapon production facilities. And while a lot of the heavily contaminated waste mining products were buried deep underground, there were probably even more that were just left above ground. This is a big no-no for the area, meaning the radiation is just kind of sitting there waiting to deteriorate anything and everything that gets too close. And to make matters worse, the area is also prone to seismic activity, so anything that's buried underground won't stay there for very long. Much of the contaminated materials can easily seep into the rivers, which are used by hundreds of thousands of people in the area below, making the Zapadny Mining and Chemical Combine a sort of ticking radioactive time bomb that hopefully never ever goes off. Number 9. The Somali Coast the next entry on our list may somehow be a bit more dramatic than the rest, but even if you do have a penchant for drama, stay away from here. Because the Somali coast is one of the most radioactive areas on Earth, rumors have circulated that Italian criminal organizations had been using the unprotected soils off the Somali coastlines for the illegal dumping of toxic materials, including nuclear waste for years. Allegedly, there are at least 600 barrels of nuclear waste here, on top of nuclear waste that came from hospitals. I mean, this story sounds like it's straight out of a movie, but unfortunately, it's most likely a true story. The area is a future disaster just waiting to happen, and it's very likely that nothing will be done to prevent that. The United Nations Environment Program is well aware that the toxic waste and subsequent radioactivity in the area, they believe that the barrels of muck washed up on the Somali coastline following the 2004 tsunami. To make matters more interesting, but also worse, after having looked at some of the barrels, judging from the rust, they've been sitting there for at least 30 years. Number 8. Goyano Institute of Radiotherapy The story of how the Goyano Institute of Radiotherapy in Brazil became a radiation hot zone is an interesting one. It all starts with a robbery gone bad in 1987. Burglars looking to get their hands on some pricey scrap metal ended up taking a teletherapy unit from an abandoned medical clinic. But little did they know that the unit contained a healthy or unhealthy dose of cesium-137. So if you're not a scientist, that's okay. All you need to know is that cesium-137 is a very seriously radioactive isotope that needs to be contained within a lead capsule. Well, the burglars opened up the machine and the lead capsule, unleashing the radioactive materials all over the area. Four people had died from the incident, and another 250 people had received an alarming amount of exposure to the radioactive contamination, so a serious cleanup needed to be done. Much of the topsoil from several sites were removed, but even worse were the occupied yet contaminated houses that needed to be demolished. The International Atomic Energy Agency called it one of the world's worst radiological incidents, and this one could have easily been avoided. Crime has consequences. Number 7. Sella Field Sally Field is an Oscar-winning actress, but Sella Field is the former site of the United Kingdom's nuclear weapons program during the Cold War. Today, though, it's used as a nuclear fuel reprocessing and decommissioning site located a little too close to a small village named Seascale on the coast of the Irish Sea. Sella Field was one of the world's first commercial nuclear power stations to be also used for electricity generation. But that part of the facility has also been decommissioned and is in the process of being dismantled. Even though Sellafield was mostly used to create destruction, it still managed to serve a positive purpose. Too bad those days are all over. But the even bigger issue now is that Sellafield plant releases 2.3 million gallons of contaminated waste into the Irish Sea a day, which as you know is never a good thing. Now the Irish Sea is one of the most radioactive bodies of water in the world, and one can only imagine what type of damage that's caused to the ecosystem under the surface. Number 6. Mayak 
As you can probably tell so far, Russia has no shortage of heavily radioactive areas, and the industrial complex in Mayak is no exception to that rule. The complex in Mayak was one of the country's main nuclear plants for plutonium production and nuclear fuel reprocessing. It is also the site of one of the world's worst nuclear disasters, known as the Kishtim Incident. The Kishtim Incident has been classified as a Level 6 disaster by the International Nuclear Event Scale, making it the third worst nuclear accident in human history. There was an explosion in 1957 at the Mayak complex that released 80 tons of radioactive waste that spread over 20,000 square miles. But the incident itself was kept a secret from the rest of the world until the 1970s. But even in the 50s, waste from the plant was being dumped into surrounding areas and Lake Karache, unbeknownst to the neighboring towns. So now, thousands of people who have relied on the lake as a water supply for the last 70 years have been using contaminated water. The Soviet Union was big on secrets, even if it meant putting its own people in harm's way. Number 5. Bomark Site RW01 the McGuire Air Force Base in Burlington County, New Jersey has a fenced-off annex that houses the Bomark Site RW01, which the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency has deemed to be one of the most contaminated bases in the country. So what happened here? Well, in June of 1960, a missile fully equipped with a nuclear warhead fell victim to a fire and was destroyed, releasing the radioactive plutonium into the environment. But it didn't stop there because the heat from the fire caused the materials to disperse over a seven-acre area. And while a redemption campaign was launched immediately after the horrific fire, the base is still contaminated 60 years later. It's truly amazing and sad how despite stockpiling all of these weapons to be used on others, we've ended up feeling the brunt of their impact. Word to the wise, do not go there. Number 4. Church Rock Uranium Mill the Church Rock Uranium Mill in New Mexico was the site of a pretty severe and horrific environmental contamination event back in 1979. A big spill sent thousands of tons of radioactive mill waste and millions of gallons of acidic radioactive materials into the Puerco River down below. The contamination spread out, though, over 80 miles downstream of the river and reached Navajo County in Arizona. This was obviously a pretty serious spill and you didn't even need to be in New Mexico to suffer from it. Radioactive materials like uranium, even when they were not stockpiled, are a very serious business. Locals had used the Puerco River recreationally and, as you can expect, suffered the effects of radiation exposure. Some people had infections so bad that they required amputations and the livestock that drank from the river every day died quickly afterwards. Then there are the aquifers that were used for drinking water for thousands of people, which were all contaminated as well. And although the tragedy at the Church Rock Uranium Mill occurred in 1979, signs of contamination were still found in the Puerco River in 2003. Number 3. Fort d'Aubervilliers When we think of France, we think of good food, great wine, and plenty of romance. But at Fort d'Aubervilliers in Paris, there is a completely different story. In the 1920s and 30s, Irene Joliot Curie, daughter of Marie Curie and her husband Frederick, decided to follow in her mother's footsteps by conducting a series of experiments with salts of radium-226, a highly radioactive isotope with an insane half-life of 1600 years. Later on, though, the same experiments were conducted at the fort by the French army to aid in their nuclear testing in Algeria. And if you've been paying attention, these experiments never end well for anybody because it turns out that all of these experiments were pretty detrimental to the fort and contaminated it almost completely. Decontamination efforts didn't begin until the 1990s, and a total of 61 barrels of cesium-137 and the Curie's radium-226 were still there, along with 160,000 gallons of contaminated soil. More contaminated areas at the fort were discovered again after residents of the area were developing cancer at a higher and faster rate than people in other non-contaminated areas. Number 2. Chernobyl Probably one of the more well-known nuclear disasters is the one that occurred in April of 1986 at Chernobyl. One of the most earth-shattering events in modern history, the incident happened one late night during a safety test meant to simulate a total power failure. Ironically and unfortunately, this led to an actual systems failure. The plant's safety systems were deactivated, which created a massive steam explosion and open-air graphite fire. 
The chemical fire sent plumes of smoke filled with radioactive materials into the atmosphere, which made for a very nasty fallout all over the then USSR and parts of Europe. Five million people from the former USSR alone were exposed to the deadly radiation, and many of them have experienced cancers and other diseases at alarmingly higher rates than what is normal. And that doesn't even take into account all of the people who were charged with cleaning up the site just after the explosions. Today, Chernobyl is still one of the most irradiated places on Earth. Amazingly, people brave or foolish enough still visit Chernobyl today. However, if you bring a Geiger counter in there, that thing is going to drive you absolutely mad. Number 1. Fukushima Daiichi Power Plant If you've seen the news in the last 10 years, then this first entry on our list should come as no surprise. Back in 2011, Japan was absolutely rocked by a 9.1 magnitude earthquake and the subsequent tsunami that followed. The Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant was completely overwhelmed by both horrible forces of nature and gave way to one of the worst nuclear disasters in decades, some of which we'll mention shortly. The power plant was somehow able to survive the earthquake, but it was the tsunami that really did it in. The waves were twice as powerful as what the plant was built to handle, and this caused the plant's seawater pumps to fail. And when the water pumps can't cool down the nuclear reactor, that's when everything falls apart. Unfortunately, the plant's three reactors leaked plenty of radioactive materials and the spill water of contaminated wastewater rushed through the area and made its way into the Pacific Ocean. Naturally, the plant was completely shut down, but massive amounts of radioactive waste found their way into the surrounding environment, making it one of the most radioactive and inhospitable places on Earth. It's estimated that it will take another 40 years to fully decommission the power plant. Watch our binge-watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge.